Bernard Ainsworth, welcome to the University of Huddersfield. Thank you. Uh, you've received a, an honorary uh, award today uh, from the university. Um, how, do you, how does that make you feel? Because you, you've lived in Huddersfield uh, many years. And what years. Have you? We're comers in, in fact, uh, but it's the place we love, right? So sort of, uh, we won't move from here, even though we're Lancastrians by, by birth. Um, how does it make me feel? Uh, surprised, enormously surprised when, in fact, I get offered it, right? Um, many thanks. In fact, I, I said thank you. In fact, it's hard to actually say the, the, the right amount of thanks. It's sort of, it's not something I expected. Uh, I think I gave a little bit. In fact, he said I didn't get a degree in my early life, and I was too lazy to get one in my middle life. Right. So I came through the technical side um, because I never fancied doing right, what my my siblings did, which was double maths or right, physics or chemistry. That never excited me. But something, in fact, I could better understand in my brain. And I was lucky. Um, I, I, I fell with a good company, it was a good family company um, called Langs, um, and I was trained at Grandfather's Knee. All right? So I went through all of their courses. I did night school, I got my professionals, so I did the, thing, the right thing. I went to the IOB, became chartered, then later on became a fellow. Sort of, uh, I joined the Institute of Highways, in fact, when I needed to, because I was doing roads at the time. So I was the first 18 years in civils. Everything from power stations abroad, Saudi, right, Poland for for a few years, um, big big plants. Uh, and final end of, of civils, I was building roads and airfields. In fact, for um, again, Lang's piece of the M25, so a piece of the M25 has got my stamp on it. <laughs> um, the did, airfield. Did you always know you wanted to be uh, no. a builder? No, no, um, no, 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 totally. How, how did you, how I, did you get And into I had to have to say, I don't think I'm a builder. Right. Yes, right. I understand building. Yes, I, what I am, in fact, is somebody that's that's got a, a, a knack of putting the right team together. I can find the right people. I've managed to find the right people, or coerce the right people, or in fact, right, sort of put them together as a team and then wind them up as a team. Right. So. Um, I do very little building. Okay, I did at the beginning. I could have walked down the slab. In fact, I could, when I took over as construction right, so I on, the, on the boatway, in fact, you put your big boots on and you go and kick grass. <laughs> Not a very good term. But you very soon learn, in fact, that you can't do it by yourself. So, and this great team, in fact, and I have had the, 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 the sort of, how do I say, the pleasure of, of going in and rescuing jobs and seeing how much you can add to a team just simply by being amongst it, by saying, in fact, thank you, by by teasing them, by kicking them at times, by tweaking their ears or by whatever, but just showing some leadership. And out of that, they'll produce eons. So in fact, I've walked in on jobs where this project manager's been sacked, where the job's in on its doldrums, and hey ho, in fact, the team's got it back, right? But they, they don't need anything. It just needs people to actually sort of, uh, lead them's the wrong word, in fact, but to say thank you at times, to actually sort of, right, to create a vision, to actually, that's what, uh, and that's what I, I didn't get across, and if I'd had a bit more thought about me, in fact, in talking to the students today, um, I think that's the bit, in fact, there's so much that people can do if they mm. keep looking around the goods. How can I do this different? How can I, how can I cut across that boundary? How can I get that thing out of my way? So you've been, that's what you, I do best. You've been described in, um, uh, oh, uh, I say many ways, but uh, a, a couple uh, or so that, uh, that, that stood out, the kindly uncle. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Dr. Rosemary, the, the she, doesn't killer think, she doesn't think that at all. <laughs> no, that's your she wife. said, where, 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 where did that description come from? She said. The killer project manager <laughs> and the ultimate project manager. Do you, do you see yourself as, as any of these? Um, what we are, I think which, which do you prefer? I think the, I think the, the one, um, I wouldn't put the killer right, project manager. Um, I would more relate to, in fact, the kind, but the kindly uncle, not in fact the one that always gives you sweets, or in fact, always says, in fact, well done, right? But the one that actually sort of can get the best out of his grandchildren or the best out of his, his nephews, right? By just, by by looking at what they can best do, in fact, and giving them support for that, or in fact, or actually moving them, or in fact, just shifting, or just talking to them, in fact, and spending time with them. Mm -hmm. it, it is, I have learned one thing, uh, that, that this industry, is about time, it's about effort, in fact, and if you're prepared to give of both, you can get an enormous amount out of it. I think you have to be lucky as well. Lucky, I came out of a family where I was taught, in fact, that, that you're related to people, in fact. From, from a very early stage, we, we were always in somewhere else, talking to somebody else, playing outside, 
in the, in the free atmosphere that came out through the 50s and sort of um, um, but you learned how to relate to people I think that's I've watched it in my children one's a lot better than the other I've watched Michael in fact who's the younger one in fact and he can walk into a room and charm <laughs> I've watched my daughter follow them and say Dad, <laughs> it's unfair, <laughs> but she's learnt it, right? So she's learnt it. So she's had to learn it, whereas Michael, in fact, didn't sort of got it. You've been involved with uh, some oh, very high-profile uh, yeah, it. projects. Yeah, yeah. The Shard, uh, yeah. Millennium Dome. Yeah. Uh, you've built, as you say, uh, motorways, yeah. nuclear power stations. Yeah. Um, if you had to. Pick one that you know. I, I, it might not be the the biggest uh, project, but one that you felt I that was that's the one for me. That's the, what I enjoyed best. Which one most would likely that be, be um, the one I think I learnt most on um, would be the car plant at Derby, the Toyota car plant at Derby. Why? Um, because I worked with a new culture, and they were the Japanese. Um, and, and the best description of that, in fact, I could give is we won the job. It was a hard tussle. It was a, an eight month bid, right? We had done numerous presentations. It had cost us a fortune. I delivered the final bid documents by helicopter. We were trying to do a bit of show with, my, with Martin Lang, with Sir Martin Lang, in fact. So we delivered it, in fact, to the, to the Japanese. Whether that did anything at all, I have no idea. We got the job, right? Um, and there wasn't a great deal of cash in it. Um, and the first thing that the Japanese did, they said, Bernard, in fact, we'd like you to um, come and look at um, some plants in uh, Japan. So I went to Tokyo, um, and for 10 days, 10, maybe 12 days, actually. Um, and I didn't, I saw one plant. I was dined, I was wined, I was nightclubbed. In fact, I, I went to <laughs> uh, houses, right? I went to see museums, I went to Kyoto. And about two thirds of the way through, I was scratching my head and said, well, I'm really enjoying this, but I've got a job to do. <laughs> and I said, why, right, to um, uh, Kei Yama-san, in fact, who was the lead for Shimizu, who was their handholder, right, sort of the Japanese uh, construction company that held Toyota's hands. And he said, Bernard, in fact, he's, and they, they always said sort of, um, they don't use their first names, sort of, so they tend to use, but he said, um, this is our biggest investment uh, ever right outside of uh, sort of certainly in England and he said we wanted you to understand how we worked how we thought and we wanted to understand you right and taking around plants wouldn't give us any of that but taking out to a nightclub does give us a bit <laughs> something in fact that I think we can all take away social time will tell you more about the team you've got than ever in fact trying to grab them around and do a di away day in fact and grind them through what you want to do over the next right? Social time, social interaction, it's part of the piece. Right? I think the Japanese taught me that. They taught me about decision making. I'd learned, in fact, that their decision making stretches the whole gamut. They'll decide on, in the same way for the tea, right? the strength of the tea as they will, in fact, for whether you're going to hang the plant off the roof or off the floor. Both decisions were made, in fact, as a theater. I've, I've dissected the bottom, I, I, I closed that decision making. But their decision making is consensus. Right, they actually the decisions evolve through their group. They're not just made by senior and dictated down. Uh, so those would be the two lessons, in fact, that I took out of. So there'd be more social lessons to me. They actually taught me a little bit more about how we should operate as people. And and what does uh, uh, the construction world hold for Bernard Ainsworth now? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm very excited. In fact. This, um, um, helping uh, do my 10 penneth, in fact, uh, with Mike um, and Sorry, the whole a, the, the dean. My, my, the dean. Yeah. Um, I'm on two um, non-exec, right, one's an advisor, but one of them, both of them are excited. One's the nuclear power, the new nuclear power station, in fact, at Hinkley. So that we will get on the, we're on the ground now, we just started the excavation, waiting for the final sort of sign off in money terms, in fact, from the government. Um, not in terms of what the cost is, but in terms of how the money, in fact, flows through. Um, but the, uh, the other exciting one is, is a tidal lagoon in Swansea, the first of its kind in the UK, um, to, to the first of a series, if we can get it through. It's halfway through its development consent order, which is the planning, right, the planning process for um, a large, large infrastructure projects. Got a semi green light from DEC, right, sort of the, the government agency for climate, right, sort of climate change. 
um, we, if we were there following wind, we'll get it off the ground in the middle of next year, right? It's always nice to be a first. It's a brilliant job. The teams are in place for both, and both parties, in fact, are EDF, in fact, a guy called Humphrey Cadder Hudson and, and Mark Shorrock out of the CEO to, said to Bernard, well, well, can you come and give us a hand? There's nothing nice. It's nice to use what I've had, what I've learnt, right, and try and offer it back. Do they always listen? Well, if they stop listening, I'll stop working. <laughs> the University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.